everyone, welcome to this Amazon Lumberyard tutorial video. In this video, we'll be setting up Lumberyard because that's actually pretty hard for beginners because, you know, the documentation isn't exactly very detailed in this regard. So first, we'll need Visual Studio 2017. However, as of Visual Studio 2017 15.8, there is a slight bug with Lumberyard 1.15 where it won't build because they've changed something. There is a fix for this here. Um, I'll put this link in the description, but I just decided to install an older version, 15.7.6. Um, so once you install that, you'll have to activate some packages. So let's just pretend I didn't have anything enabled. So first, you want to tick Universal Windows Platform Development and C++ Universal Windows Platform Tools and Graphics Debugger and GPU Profiler for DirectX. Then you want to tick Desktop Development with C++ and make sure MFC is ticked as well as the ATL one, it's Visual C++ Toolset and uh, Windows 10 SDK, but most of those should be enabled by default. Uh, then you want to scroll down to Game Development with C++ and here you want to make sure that you tick the Windows 8.1 SDK and UCRT SDK. Um, with all that ticked you can just tick whatever else you want to use other projects and stuff. I like ticking Linux development. And once you have all those ticks, you just update it. Well, I mean install it. You can also set the install location here. So once Visual Studio 2017 is set up, you then have to go to the GitHub page for Amazon Lumberyard. You can install it from the website, but if you want to easily upgrade to the next version without reinstalling every single thing, um, this, is a, this is a better option. So here you want to do, um, well, if you're using GitHub, you'll want to fork it. However, if you're using Visual Studio Online, which um, is actually pretty useful because they give you basically unlimited storage and unlimited Git large file storage, which is very useful when you're dealing with large FPX files, etc. You don't want to instant do clone or download and then copy that. And then in your with Visual Studio Online um, project thing, you want to clone that there. So in Visual um, in Visual Studio Online, you'd want to do clone from here, and then just copy that. And then what you want to do is get a Git client. So first you have to install Git, by the way. Um, I'll put all these links in the description. Um, so you want to make sure you download that. When you start downloading it and stuff, um, you'll need to make sure that you um, enable it in the file path. So um, while that downloads, we'll get to. Um, so you want to get a, a Git client. Um, I recommend Git Kraken just because it's it's free and it's good. So you can just download that, and once that's downloaded, you can open Git Kraken. Sometimes Git Kraken is a little slow though, so you might want to use the the command line occasionally. So yeah, when you go through the setup of installing Git, you want to, um, so here you want to tick um, desktop icon, obviously. Windows Explorer doesn't really matter. You want to get Git LFS, because that will help you with large files and textures. Um, associate, associate, use true type, and check daily for updates, yep. Here, um, if you have Visual Studio, uh, whatever you want to use as your text editor. Here you want to use to use git from the windows command group. and then uh, use open ssh, open ssl library, check out windows style or comment the unix style, use windows default to console, enable all of these things and then install it. I've already installed that. So also when you install git kraken um, you want to do file clone repo and you want to paste that URL we copied from Visual Studio and then download it somewhere. So for instance I've got it on my D drive Amazon Lumbiard Lumbiard. Um, also when you do this you'll want to um, add your account because as you can see actually you don't need to copy the clone link you can just do this if you've already added your account and to do that it's up here in the preferences section. Um, so yeah, if you go to preferences, you'll want to, um, well first if you're using GitHub um, and you're using like don't show email, you'll have to do that. But for authentication, you'll want to go to VSTS 
add your account and then when it does this SSH key thing you'll want to click on this and set that up uh, but once you do that you should have Lumberyard kind of installed on your system so when you open your git character and project that you just cloned it might take a while um, you'll see something similar to this although this window will be virtually empty because there'll be no comments um, so what do you want to do is well the first thing I do is here it won't say local it'll say master so you want to click on that create branch here type in here local instead and then you can delete your master branch because you can use the local for all the local stuff and then when you click push it'll ask you where you want to push it on the remote system and with that you just want to make sure that you don't type anything else in because it'll automatically have a slash and then fade it out text saying local and that'll create the local branch on your um, Visual Studio Online account too. Um, there'll be quite a lot of things you'll have to comment. Um, as you can see I was not using git lfs at the time and this happened. I had to break it up into many things. I'm not sure if you still have to do this with git lfs but um, yeah you have to push quite a lot of things. So before you actually push anything um, you want to make sure that your git ignore file is set up correctly. So as you can see it's here in the base directory. Um, I have just added a ton of things that you'll want to be ignoring. Um, so um, I'll put that in the description as well, down the link for this git ignore file that you can use. And once you apply that you can just um, begin commenting and pushing um, a, few, a, a few things at a time maybe. I wouldn't do a big one at first because I don't know how good L Git LFS works, so I might just do like a thousand at a time, I think that's what I did. Um, it'll take a while but it's worth it because then when you have to update you just pull the new changes. You can now get onto what you're supposed to do to install the rest of Unreal. So here there's this git bootstrap.exe file. Uh, you want to right click that and choose run as administrator. This might not work for me, but it'll just say like, um, press enter to continue and just press that. It'll take a long while because it has to install it. Yeah, press enter to continue. It'll take a long time because it'll install it into a temporary location, unzip it, and then move it to the correct Lambert directory. So that takes forever. So you'll probably just want to leave this overnight maybe, or go out and do something while you wait. Uh, once that happens, you'll gr be greeted with a lot less options. So by default, you'll only have these two ticked, or maybe even just one of them. But you want to tick the first five here, and these if you're going to use those, and tick Visual Studio 2017, because that's what we're using. Then you want to go to Install Software. Make sure you install all these um, redistributionals, redistributables. Uh, that's a hard word to say. Um, you'll also want to install the um, WYS LTX authoring tool because that's for setting up audio in your um, project. So when you first click that it'll um, it'll install the WYS launcher. You can install this anywhere, it doesn't matter. And it'll come up with this. I've already installed it but what we basically want to do is make sure both of those are ticked. Um, Android if you're using it, I'm not. Um, under Apple, iOS, and wh whatever you're using. Linux if you're using it, and here you want to make sure 2017 is ticked. The other ones do not need to be ticked. Um, you can also get FFmpeg. Um, you get the static library from the FFmpeg website. So you want to get the, the nightly build, or this build doesn't really matter. Uh, Windows 64 bit and you want to download each one and then in here go into the static bin and choose that exe. You can also get Speedtree which is actually very good and yet yeah, it's still free so you can just do that and then go into the directory where you installed in Win64 and then choose that exe. Well actually it will just say choose folder and it will automatically find the exe. Then you want to go to install optional first and 
here for Clang, you want to install this one first because it's only like 7 gigabytes and it goes through pretty quick. If you're using Photoshop, you'll also want to follow these steps. And if you're going to use video playback, so playing videos in your game, um, you want to get FFmpeg or libav. In Lumberyard 1.15, FFmpeg is broken, but normally what you do is just combine some stuff from here. But um, instead, you have to use libav, which is um, it's not actually that hard to install. So what you do is you get the build, and then you want to choose the release dash lgpl, and then from here. You want to make sure that you're getting the most recent thing. Here we go, and you want to get the x86 one. And then you want to extract that into the third party folder. And in make a new folder here called libav. Then make a folder in it called 11.7. And then you should be able to put these files into it from that um, 7 zip you installed. You may need WinRAR to extract that. I'll put the link in the description, but you should know how to do that. Um, once you have all of that stuff, um, it won't tick immediately. You'll have to click this to verify, but you should do that after you install the rest. So you then um, you can get the FBX SDK first before you click install all, because you have to install it separately. So install that. Make sure you do not change the install directory because it will install to the third party folder. Then you want to click the install all button and this will again take a while. Um, and once that happens you can click this button in the top and just double check that the optional SDK is set up properly. Then you want to go to install plugins. If you have Photoshop um, just to, like browse and find it. And if you have um, any other software do those. Also make sure you install the RC shell commands. Then when you get to the summary, you should click on configure project. It'll look like this. And here you want to, you um, I assume you're making a new project, so create new project, choose the default template, name it something, and then click create. But before you do that, um, you want to go back to your Lumbyard install, to the dev directory in the WAF. And then open up the user setting options. Here you just want to set up a few things to make sure that you get the desired result. So generate VS projects automatically should be set to true with a small t. Then under build options, you want to set um, use uber files to true with a capital T. Then you want to set max parallel link to 4 and win build renderer to dx12. And then you want to go and then at the bottom of the file you want to set up the Visual Studio 2017 version and for the win kit you want to set the um, Windows 10 SDK that you installed just reopen the Visual Studio installer and you'll be able to see what version you have and also set that as the VS 2015 win kit once you do all those changes and save the file and go back here and create that project. It says it'll take 10 minutes. It'll actually take about two hours, maybe one hour and a half, depending how powerful your computer is, maybe even more than two hours. So again, this is something you want to leave on overnight or uh, during the day while you're out. Once you have a project, you can click, um, or you want to select it and then click set as default. And then you want to click enable gems and go through and enable uh, whatever gems you want to use. You can also make your own gems from here. So, um, for instance, I have a playground gem, and that contains assets, mainly code as well. You can choose either of these. If you choose code and assets, you'll have to do a rebuild. And if you enable anything that um, has code and assets, as it says in that red text, you'll have to rebuild the project. And so, how do you do that? So. Um, you want to uh, open up Visual Studio 2017. You can do this from command line, but I like doing it from here because this is where you'll spend most of your time if you're programming in C++. So then what you do is you want to click Tools, External Tools, click Add, and it will create a new thing. 
and you'll want to name it configure game and then set the command directory to um, the dev folder and then you want to select the lmbr underscore raft dot bat file and then the argument should be configure space dash p space game click apply and ok and then you'll want to click here add or remove buttons customize and you'll want to add the external command by going to add command tools and then just select the external command. I think this is the number six uh, from that list, that drop down list. So that's what that is, and you can move it around, put it there. Then you actually want to press that, and what this will do, it'll just generate a Lumbiard solution that you can use. The reason we do dash p game is because we don't want everything in Lumbiard. We only just we we only want the stuff that's with our project. So we do dash p game, and this will get us all our project things. Also, a thing to note while this happens is um, when you um, create a new project, it'll do a dash p all build, meaning that you don't have to do one um, now when you're trying to set stuff up because it'll already have built the editor and the asset process and things to run with your project. So instead, you just have to do dash p game builds, which are a lot faster. Although the first time you do a dash p game build, it'll still take about two hours. That actually took a lot longer than expected, but it basically it just um, compiles a few uber files, which um, allows you to build it slightly faster. So what this will generate is a game underscore vs15 solution, which is in your dev directory then solutions. So you'll want to open that. Depending how many gems you enabled, this might be really quick or it might take a while. Um, we should probably wait for it to load everything first before we try and do anything. Here we go. You want to select the solution configurations, modify it, and set the width to 200, because that way you can actually read what's in it. You want to set it to game profile, x64, and then you want to do local windows debugger to actually build your game. And this will do a dash p game build with a, in the profile mode. Uh, while this is happening, um, or before it, ideally, right click your solution properties, and then you want when when that opens up, you want to set it. You want to set the startup project. Here we go. You want to set the single startup project to be your project name Windows Launcher, and apply that, and then you can close it again. Yeah. So the first time you do this, it'll take um, two hours, but um, once you once you start doing C++ and only it, it'll, it'll compile a lot faster because it only has to compile the new stuff which you've added, it doesn't have to compile everything every single time. I think that's it for how to set up um, Amazon Lumbiard. It'll take a long time but um, it's really worth it once you start using the C++ things and um, in uh, future videos of this Lumbiard series I hope to do some C++ stuff. Okay, thanks for watching.